Welcome to another edition of History Science Fiber. My name is Zoe McDonald. I'm a professional biologist and I also specialize in how to get color from nature. Today we are dying with curly dock, also called yellow dock or Rumex crispus to find out why people all over the world have been dying with it for generations. Now this video is part of a playlist on dying with plants and as well as dying during the summer season. You can then use this information for your own wildcraft dying. Let me know in the comments below if there's something you wanna see different kinds of playlists or videos about dying. Now this plant is high in tannin and does not always require a mordant if processed with roots, which are high in tannins. The plant itself carries anthroquinones as well as yellow colorants in the flavonoid group. These give colors which range from yellow to bright orange and russet brown, all of which are considered light fast and resistant to fading after washings. Today we are going to be dyeing with the mature seeds of the curly dock. Now, in the spring, I did try to dye with the leaves, but only managed a pretty meh color, even using 10 to 1 weight of fresh leaves to fiber. After I did a bit more research, I discovered that waiting until mid to late summer and moving forward with the mature seeds instead should give me more color options. Now, plants in this genus have been used by indigenous people, such as the Navajo and Hopi in the Southwest to give gold to orange tones. In Scotland and Ireland, the stems have been used historically with iron to get black. While in the 16th century in Ethiopia, monks were noted to wear yellow robes made with dock plants. So these have been a popular source of dye for hundreds of years by people all over the world. Now, the good news with this plant is that it is very abundant in many areas. It's invasive in many regions, so you can pick it fairly conscience-free, and it prefers disturbed areas like roadsides, ditches, fields, urban gardens, etc. So hopefully you will be able to find some without too much trouble. The plant itself usually grows about a meter or so high, or one to five feet, with long, narrow, dark green leaves marked with distinctly wavy margins. Each plant makes a profusion of seeds, so collecting enough for your projects hopefully shouldn't be a problem. For this video, the seeds were harvested in mid-July. I found a big patch back in May, but I waited until the seeds were mature and the plant itself from being typical green color to a rich dark brown with those heavy, heads, heavy seed heads at the top. At that stage, I harvested the seeds From there, I wanted to see what would happen if I dyed two hanks, one pre with alum and the other pre with iron. Now I have been reading that no mordant is required if you dye with the roots, as I mentioned above, but these plants are growing in super compacted clay and getting the roots out just wasn't working. So if you can't make your own mordant, store-bought is fine. So <laughs> I brought the seeds home, dried them, and decided to try two to one dried seeds to fiber weight. So here I used 22 grams of wool, so I used 44 grams of dock seeds. I took my dyer's pot, I added my usual paint mesh bag, available at most paint stores, they're very inexpensive, in a five gallon size, and then added the seeds. I simmered the seeds for an hour. I let them steep overnight for 24 hours. I then removed the bag with the seeds.
And from there, I pre-soaked my wool in water for about an hour and then added them to the dye pot. The wool was simmered for an hour and left to cool overnight. In terms of the colors, the iron warranted yarn turned a super, super dark brown. I feel like if I'd used a higher dye material to fiber ratio, it probably would have headed into the black range. The alum warranted wool came out a lovely yellow with sort of distinct variegated effect with tan colors. I even redid the dyeing with all new curly dock and new wool, and it still came out slightly variegated. I do think that this color would make great socks. Thanks so much, and be sure to subscribe for future videos on dyeing.